the Soviet ships unload at the port of Mariel in Cuba. U.S. surveillance photographs confirm the contents of the crates. Fighter jets, patrol boats, and trucks, all clearly arms for Cuba. But there is no photographic evidence of nuclear missiles. For the Soviets, their secret is safe. Leading one team of missile engineers is a young major, Mikhail Bernov. We would unload at Mariel only at night. We had the missiles in the big hangar, and we would only transport them after three in the morning. Moving at night keeps the missiles secret from the watchful eyes of American surveillance. Keeping the operation secret from Cuban civilians, however, proves a greater challenge. Jorge Risquet was a party secretary in the Cuban government. We have to say that it was an open secret. A secret that millions of Cubans knew about. For example, there were cases where we would have to tear down a house in a small village to allow the big missile trucks to turn a corner. It was difficult to maneuver a 30 meter long missile on a truck. It's hard to corner in small villages where there may be a 90 degree turn with a telephone pole. You would have to cut down the pole to get through. The Soviet soldiers wear civilian clothing and are not allowed to speak Russian. Once troops arrive at the designated sites, the living conditions remain difficult. We didn't have housing. We had to build it ourselves. We didn't want to go to bed. We were scared of insects biting us. Meanwhile, 75,000 feet above them, they are being watched. The American U-2 is a high-altitude spy plane, carrying cameras loaded with high-resolution film. It shoots enormous negatives of the ground from 14 miles high. The U-2 can see fine detail, small vehicles, men, tire tracks. But August 1962 is cloudy. For three crucial weeks, the U-2 overflights are put on hold. The assembly and concealment of the Soviet missile sites continues to go unobserved. August 29th, a U-2 spy plane is finally cleared for an overflight of Cuba. When the film from this run is analyzed by the NPIC, they discover the first signs of real trouble. On an August the 28th mission over Cuba, we spot these objects. This particular pattern looks like a Star of David. The photo analysts recognize this pattern from previous reconnaissance photography of Soviet weapon sites. There is no doubt, these objects are what's known as SAMs, SA-2 surface-to-air missile sites. Problem number one, SA-2 SAMs are capable of shooting down U-2 aircraft. Problem number two, the fact that the Soviets installed these sophisticated anti-aircraft weapons indicates they are protecting something much larger. But for now, the nuclear missiles are too well hidden to be seen. The missiles were covered in tents. They were 30 meters long, put into a ditch and covered, so that from above, you could only see tents. As Major Richard Heiser takes off from Edwards Air Force Base in California, on the next U-2 overflight of Cuba, the U.S.-Soviet situation stands at a crossroads. The Soviets are within days of making their nuclear missiles operational. The Americans know something dangerous is happening in Cuba, but aren't sure what it is. On Vieques Island, off the coast of Puerto Rico, Opland 316 is rehearsed by American Marines in preparation for a full-scale invasion of Cuba. 7 a.m. As Heiser steers his U-2 into Cuban airspace, the Cold War is about to change dramatically. <laughs> 